Secrets of a Spyware Detective, today on Call for Help. I hope these people can help me with my computer. Oh. Oh, no. A technician will be with you in four hours. Four hours? You can upgrade for just $5,000. What? The universal serial config board should be set to ID6. I need that in plain English. Help. Leo LaPorte to Call for Help. May I help you? Hey there, welcome to Call for Help. It's time. Get everybody in the house. Call for Help is on, and I'm here, Leo Laporte, with my help pets. The helpers are here. <laughs> AndyCyberWalker.com, Cyberwalker is his website, and Amber, AmberMac.com. AmberMac.com. We should all be have our middle names. Be, I'm Leo LeoLeoVille.com. <laughs> <laughs> all our websites be in the middle names. It's good to see you all. How yeah, you doing? Yeah, you feeling great. good? You ready for a big show? Too, too, much, coffee. too much coffee today. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, You've been drinking coffee? Uh, yeah, yeah. A little too much coffee. Okay, well, that'll be interesting. Well, she'd have a very quick show. It'll be only 50 minutes instead of a normal 59 when it's 5 9. So, what are you doing on the show today? Today, I'm, we're going to dig deep, deep, deep into uh, Windows XP to find uh, where spyware hides, specifically the host's file. Secrets of the Spyware Masters. That's yeah. right. Yes, that should very be a cool. lot of fun. And how yeah. about you, Amber? Um, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about how to be a better internet searcher. Oh, really? Yeah, so help people save a little bit of time so you're not spending hours on Google trying to find something. Uh, we used to, you know, that used to be a big thing. It's just mm -hmm. all these, you know, Boolean yeah, and or equals, not equals, and all that stuff. And Google kind of took, every, you know, everybody stopped doing the, that because yeah. Google does so much. But there's still a lot of, there's there may still be more a few subtle. Tips that you, yeah, that it's can it's help more out. subtle, really, because. Yeah, some people are really good at finding stuff, and some people just can't figure it out. Yeah, and there's still always those people who are just discovering Google for the first time sure. or want to know more information about searching for images I and those types of things. you can still use Boolean search terms on Google. I don't think anybody yeah. does. And or, yeah. and or right. else. Else. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. yeah, you still can. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. And, of course, what do I do on the show? <laughs> I answer phone calls. That's what I do. Let's take our first call today. All have? right. We have John from Thornhill, Ontario. All right. Let's say hi to John. From Thornhill, Ontario, and on the way over to John, let's say hello to my good friend, <laughs> Basil. Yeah. I used to call him Herb, and they said it's not pronounced that way, it's pronounced Basil. Hello, John, welcome to the show. Hi, Leo. How are you? Good, yourself? Very well. What can I do for you today? Well, I had a problem with my computer. I had the Windows Update icon at yep. the bottom in the taskbar. Yep. Or and it kept showing 0% and I couldn't click on it, oh, it wasn't, or remove it. It wasn't really downloading the update. No, it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. That, it was like that for a couple weeks. And then did it fix itself? Yeah, then it started downloading and then it asked me to install the update. Yeah. So I installed it. Yeah. And then when I restarted my computers, I couldn't log into my account anymore. I was at the welcome screen. Oh, no. I couldn't log in. So I called the... Uh, my Dell tech support. Yeah. And they tried to get me in through safe mode. Yeah. But that didn't work. Yeah. So I reinstalled Windows in a different folder to try to access my files. It's like getting. I could just reformat it's, my hard drive. It's getting worse and worse. Yeah. And then I can't access the files because it says it yeah. access is denied. Yeah, because it's not you. Exactly. Only you I, can access those files, and the problem is there's a certificate. In that, uh, in the in the documents folder, your your old documents folder, and you have to log in with that same account and that same version of Windows. We've got to get you into Windows if you're going to get your files off of there. Like I could log in, it brings me to my desktop, but I just have the wallpaper, and a couple seconds later it says logging off, and it brings me back to the welcome menu. So you were able to get in, but then it logged you right out. Yeah. Was it service? Like I, was it? I don't see anything on the desktop. Was it Service Pack Two? Was that the big update you installed? I'm not I sure. Bet it was. I didn't check it. I, I just... bet it was. We're starting to hear weird anomalous behavior uh, with some people when they upgrade to Service Pack 2, which is the biggest Windows update since XP came out. I mean, it's a massive update, a very important update. It, it, it changes a lot of security settings, and I am still telling people to do it. However, if your system has spyware on it or is a little strange, sometimes it can cause it to throw it for a loop. John, do you know about spyware? Do you have any spyware software? Yeah, I uh, ran Adware and removed all the spyware. Good man. They found that was before you did the update. Yeah, before. Yeah. Okay, um, and uh, and you have an antivirus and you keep that up to date as well, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in my new versions of Windows, because I have it installed in a different folder, and that's what I'm running right now. Yeah. Well, that's going to be. I, ha I have Service Pack two installed on this one. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, that's boy. You know, you're gonna you gotta get. So you you were willing to rebuild your system. You're just trying to get those data files. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you can get in. I hope you can get in uh, using uh, there, there's this, you know, there's a hidden administrator login in Microsoft Windows XP, uh, a, a system root login that you should be able to log in under. And, you know, one hopes to be able to log in. And because it's the the roots of the system, you can see every file and you should be able to copy your files over to some backups and then do then do the rebuild. The, ke the, the, the key is how do you get in as that uh, that high-end system root? And I can't, do you remember Andy had to log in as, it's a hit, you know, the, it, whenever XP is created, it actually creates, it, it doesn't show up in the lists or anything like that, but it creates a system administrator, a high-end system administrator. It's not just administrator with the blank well, you've, password. Is you've, it? you've tried that, right, John, logging in as administrator? Yeah. Yeah, um, administrator, and then the password. It's a, password. It's, a, it's a different one, yeah. It's a, boy, I wish I could remember. A hidden uh, root in XP. I'm going to do a quick search. Um, boy, I can't, you know, I'm going to have to take a look for it. Um, but there, you know, if you can get in that way, because you'll be root. Every, every multi user operating system has this kind of secret root pa uh, user that has access to everything. I'll have to do a little searching to, to remember how to log in. Maybe, maybe SP2 disabled it. Could be. Well, yeah, you know, I'm wondering what happened. I, I think what happened is you installed SP2, and it, and it, uh, why, why is it, he's, lo so this is of your normal login, not the second Windows you installed. On the normal login, you log yeah. in, the screen starts to show up, and it logs you right out again. Yeah. That sounds virus-like almost, doesn't it? doesn't it? sound like uh, it should be doing that, yeah. No, and, there, and there's data on there that uh, you desperately need? Yeah. Yeah, that's too bad. Well, of course there is. <laughs> well, there always is, isn't there? I, I'm starting to I'm starting to believe that maybe if anybody who wants to do SB2 effectively should, you know, do a clean reinstall on their system. Well, you'd certainly you know. be better off doing that. You'd be yeah. more likely to have a good install. Um, you did the right thing, though. I have to say, John, by making sure you, all your spyware was gone. Um, that that's the first thing to do, and 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 really do a good cleanup. Uh, well, I'm going to have to look. You know, another maybe he could. Um, what he needs, you see, the problem is the recovery, I was thinking recovery console, but even then I don't think he'll be able to access that data. You have to log in as you or as the root it's to access data? that data. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do some searching uh, on that one. Well, let me, hidden administrative, let me see. How to create and delete hidden administrative shares. Now, this is, uh, this is, this is something that if you're done ahead of time, you'd be all right. You want to be, you want to be, um, you, I, I'll tell you, I don't, I, I don't know off the top of my head. We'll find it for you, though. We will find right. it. Yeah, just uh, don't give up yet. Don't farm, format that hard drive just yet. Well, I'm still waiting. <laughs> Before the show's over, I'm sure we'll find an answer. When SP2 ate my hard drive, what I did was I created a new partition, created a fresh system yeah. on there, and then basically spent... It got you know got me back on my feet from a computer perspective. It's kind of what he did. It sounds like, yeah. Yeah, and then you know, and then used various approaches and research to try to recover my data thereafter. <sighs> yeah, the, the 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 problem is that data is going to be only he will be able to as as the uh, that user will be able to get to that data. So we got to find a way to get to that. But data. at least he can get his computer life back. Yeah, well, he's using it right now. Oh, he's using it right now. Yeah, he's, that's exactly what he did. He created a new partition and put Windows okay. on there. Sorry. Uh, we will figure it out here and, and, and get you an answer. Okay, John, don't give up. Okay. Don't format that drive just yet. Okay. Hey, I thank you for the call. Thank I, you. I hate that when we get stymied on that one, but uh, uh, I'm almost positive there's a way to get in there. We'll, we'll find it. Coming up, Andy has some extreme spyware removal tips in just a bit. You stay right here. Back to call for help. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. When I can't, we can't get the. Uh, you know, I, we'll find. We got to find an answer to that question because that's drives me crazy when that happens. But so, so that's the issue. Is he create? He has his regular log on. We created some data. He can't get into that account. How does he get that data? Now you can't get it as another user because it's locked down to him. For some reason, I think that I, I've done it before through safe mode. Though, can you just boot into safe mode and well, that would kind of defeat the whole, I know, whole point of having user accounts? I know, but Windows security is kind of flaky anyway. I think you have to be. Mm. I think there's a certificate in that uh, user's directory, and it has to match that certificate. And if you're not the same login, you're not going to be able to access that data unless you're the super user. Unless you're the super now, user. Now, uh, he's I, probably the problem here is, of course, if you are running a, as a super user always, if you're running as an administrator. You're, you're, you're going to have a problem because you're the only one who can get those files. But there is, I, I'm just trying to remember how to log in as, the, there is an even higher root user on Windows XP. I'm pretty sure of it. Somebody 
Somebody told well, me. Well, we'll poke around and we'll see oh, if we we'll can find figure it, it we'll out before the end of the show. Meanwhile, spyware is another very frustrating problem that can happen to your computer. If there's still some weird spyware on your system and you've tried everything, fear not. Andy's here to show us extreme spyware removal tips. We've showed us hijack this. We've seen SpyBot search and destroy and Adaware. Pest Patrol 2, what could be more extreme than that? Well, there's this, uh, Windows has this wonderful, it's like an antique store, I find. You know, Windows has been around since Windows 3.1. Right. So there's a lot of artifacts from a long, long time ago. Yes, indeed, there are. And there's one of these, like, magical or ugly files, depending on which way you look at it, uh, called hosts. Ah, the hosts file. And to understand what the hosts file used to do, you sort of have to understand how the, what the, internet, how the internet gets you to where you want to go when you surf the web right. today. It, so when you type in Amazon.com, mm -hmm. it goes to a, a server out there on the internet called a DNS server, mm -hmm. and it says, "Where's Amazon? What's the telephone number for Amazon.com?" Mm -hmm. And then the DNS server says, "Well, actually, it's this address," and then you use that numeric address to find Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. Well, the host file used to do that. It was sort of its own telephone directory for the, well, still for, for the network, and still Before does. Before you go out onto the, uh, and this is to save time with, so that you don't bog down the DNS server. It checks the every. By the way. Unix systems use this, and Mac systems use it too. They check a local file first, first yes. to see if you know where that Amazon.com, what the numeric address of that Amazon.com server That's right. is. However, yeah, the dark side is that some spyware and many viruses. I think it was Netsky and some of those other variants. Sometimes they write to the host sure, file and they, they re it. and they redirect you right. to a bad place on the internet or. Or you know, some place you don't want to go. That's that's a really nasty trick because a lot of people don't know what, how that even could happen. Right. Well, I mean, one one of them actually it was it was the so way. So you type in Google.com and you'd go to Casino.com. Right. Yeah. Or you type in uh, SemanticUpdate.com to get right. your virus updates and you go nowhere. Yeah. Right. So let me show you. That was a very common trick, wasn't it? Yeah. That was a very common trick. That was a way that they blocked the right. updates so right. that a virus could stay doing what it does. Right. So how? So where is our host file? Well, the best way. You'll find it in different places on your on your machine, right. but the best way to find it is just to, to type uh, to run your search routine, and click all files, and to type H O S T S. Typically in the Windows 30 system 32, but it could be in a lot of different places, depending on the version of Windows you're using. That's and right. by the way, this this applies for, as I said for Mac, and Unix, and Linux, and almost any operating system. Oh, it's in the Windows slash i386. Well, there you yeah. go. Although, you know what? On some machines, it seems to go there, and other machines, and in, in this one that this we're is on... The place I thought it was is System32 slash driver slash Etsy. That That's where is, it's supposed to be, I and think. That is where... Yeah. How it's behaving with this machine, Yeah, I think that's the normal place for it to be. So you're going to click on Hosts, and you're going to say Open. And I just use Notepad. I choose it's a plain Notepad. text file. It's a plain text file. Um, and so I click OK, Open. And... There's not much in there. There's some instructions in right. there, and there's the most common uh, entry is 127.0.0.1 localhost, which is sort of, it means this machine, right. the machine you were on. If you had a server running on your machine, all you have to do to type in your browser is localhost, and it would go to, to the server, the 127, server. which is yours. That's yeah. right. However, but you could put some other stuff in there. Well, what, what Spyware does is it goes 127.0.0.1. Which is here. Which is here. And... It'll put, you know... Symantec.com. Symantec.com. Yeah. Right. Well, you never get to Symantec ever again. No, because I'll show you what happens. Let's just do it, actually, just since we have... Oh, you're going to break our system. I'm going to try to break <laughs> our system. I'm going to put w, www in there, too. Oops. It's alias it as well. Huh? File, save. Close that off. And then I'm going to open Internet Explorer. Explorer. This would be a great way to prank somebody, too. if you, uh, Or if or, there's a site you go to a lot, you could speed it up, as long as that number didn't change. The reason they use this system is the, 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 the name never changes, but the number could. You could use a different server. And look at that. Can't go to semantic.com. Can't go to semantic. Can't find it. Oh, oh interesting. interesting. You got pushed to some... Uh, it looks like a... Oh, you're, you're getting... <laughs> no, that's, it's McAfee. Oh, okay. That's an interesting little behavior. No, that's the 180 search assistant. You got uh -huh. spyware on there, I got spyware on there. Oh, no, you know, it's because of my spyware demo. You got spyware it's on there. That was very interesting. You see what happened there? And that's an example. So he tried to get to Symantec. He had the 180 search assistant on there, which took over and said, well, you're going to Symantec? Why don't we take you to McAfee, their competitor, instead? <laughs> Very nasty stuff. And so, probably, I would expect, McAfee had paid them to do that. Uh, yeah, you'd well, think I'm so. I'm not going to throw any stones here. But. So, so how do you undo it? Well, you just go find that host file. Go you back. You take that line out. Right. And you save it again. Right. And you're okay. Okay. And I would suggest everybody go check your and host check your host file right now. Right. Right now. And, and some uh, anti-spyware programs will allow you to modify or, and or protect your host file. Spyware does that. So you can actually put in a... One thing you Spy might want right? to do... Spybot? Spybot, I should say. Hmm? One, one thing you might want to do is uh, put in there all the 
uh, spy sites that you don't want to go to. You know, if you don't want double click advertisement, put double click dot net yeah. in there and make it 127.0.0.1, and you'll never get another ad from double click. So there's some ways you can use this too. Yeah. They're very well, sneaky. If your kid goes, kids go to bad sites that you know of. You can yeah. redirect them to a good site. Right. Disney. Not, not many kids know about hosts yet. <laughs> they do. Now they, do. they do now. They do now. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, we should have said, kids, don't watch this. For more details on these tips, as always, check out our show notes at callforhelptv.com. Right now, let's test your tech knowledge. Mm -hmm. Andy won Leo Zero so far on the show today. Our question of the day, what kind of port do those old 68,000-based Macs feature? They, did they have an RS-232 port, a SCSI port, a USB port, or a fine dessert wine QB3 is that a well-known port? I guess uh, so. Get to the website, give us the answer. We'll talk about it in just a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to Call for Help. We're ready to rock and roll with some tech questions here. Let's get another geek caller on the line. Uh, Amber, who do you have? All right, we have Micheline from Gatineau, Quebec. Oh, hello, Micheline. Bonjour. Hi. Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Oh, merci for calling. What can I do to <laughs> aid <great>. you? <laughs> okay, my question is about overclocking my video card. Oh. I have a NVIDIA GeForce FX 5200. Mm -hmm. I, I, want, I had it for less than one year. Yeah. I want to know if I would ha see a big difference in the performance of the game. You might. You might. I'll tell you, um, a video card, like, it has a processor on it. Okay. And like any processor, you can overclock it. That is, running it faster okay. than it's rated for. Yes. Now, actually, video cards, you can overclock two different components. You can overclock the core, which is the graphics processor, the CPU. Okay. And you can overclock the memory. You can have the memory access speed up. And both of those things will speed up your video card quite a bit. However, there's a couple of caveats here. Uh, one is overclocking, as always, will often reduce the reliability of your system. Okay. And that means uh, that sometimes you'll see more crashes or weird behavior or kind of, you know, odd unreliability. So generally what I recommend if you're overclocking is, and usually, by the way, on video card overclocking, you can do this in software. You'll da just look for a program that allows you to overclock. Uh, a GeForce card, okay. and you'll just kind of, it, sometimes it's in the driver. In fact, I think NVIDIA puts it in its drivers, so you might check your driver to see if you can t tune up the memory speed and turn up the video speed. But I wouldn't do it a lot. Okay. I would do it 10% at a time, play the game, see if it's reliable, see if your system's reliable, and then another 10%, another 10%. The other issue that can, can make a difference in terms of reliability is cooling. The, okay. As the card gets hot, anytime you overclock, the processor's working harder, it's going to get hotter. If you can cool it better, you'll often get better reliability. That's maybe another fan for your, uh, if your video card doesn't already have a fan, get a fan for it. Improving the cooling in the, uh, in the case. Some people even get water-cooled cases just so they can overclock their video card. Okay. That's pretty hardcore. I would just say buy a new video yeah. card. In case. <laughs> uh, is this for you, Micheline, or is this, uh, are you well, a Well, actually, it's for uh, my boyfriend. I was going to say... This is the kind of thing a guy would do. So you yeah. want so he's the gamer of the family. He is. What games does he play? Uh, he plays uh, Far Cry, Battlefield, oh. Matthew. Oh, oh, Far Cry and Battlefield are extremely demanding programs. Yeah, right, right now he's only able to play Far Cry at medium. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is the other issue is. You can overclock all you want, but if it's an older video card, it may not have the capability at all of doing some of the things that these newer games. Want. They're DirectX 9 games, which means they may take advantage of features that the card just doesn't have. So run it faster all you want. It, running it faster should increase the frame rate. Okay. But, if, but, but when, when they say high quality, they may be talking about other things like bump mapping and anti-aliasing that your card can't, may or may not be able to do. Okay, okay. So there's a limited amount. You know, yes, you'll speed up the frame rate. But there's a limited amount you can do with an existing card. Yeah, what I would suggest is, uh, I don't happen to have one on, on the system because we have an, uh, an ATI card in here. It wouldn't do me any good. I would first look in your driver, see if you have the, uh, it, it built into the display panel, uh, display properties control panel. Okay. Um, you may actually have, if you go to the driver settings, okay. uh, the, the card settings, you may have uh, overclocking capability. I think a lot of the NVIDIA uh, drivers do. And then, and then if you do, uh, let's just see if this one, if this one does. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think it does. 
Um, we, I don't even know if we're running, yeah, see, I think I have very limited capabilities here on this Radeon card. Um, but if it doesn't, then you can usually download a third-party program and just nudge those sliders up a little bit at a time and, okay. until he gets to better quality. He may never get to high quality in Far Cry or Battlefield 1942, but he should at least be able to get faster frame rates at the quality he's Faster in. frame rate yeah. would be better. Oh, it is. It's smoother motion in the, in the, and so forth. The, 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 really, the, the thing on video games is if you bring the resolution down, to 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768 and lower that resolution, mm -hmm. you can increase, usually increase the frame rates and increase the quality. Okay. But as you get to higher resolutions, it has to work harder, it's updating more dots, then the quality has to go down. So what, another way to do this, in a way, is to lower the resolution on the screen, see if he can deal with it, if it still looks good to him. You'll always get a much better frame rate at 800 by 600 than you would at 1600 by 1200. Yeah, I think he, that's what he used. Uh, that's how he's doing it by now. 800. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It's an older card. I mean, you really want to be nice to your boyfriend? Okay. Get, her a new, get him a new card. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, but that's pretty nice. But the problem with this computer, we only have PCI. We don't yeah. have the GP. Yet. Right. Oh, yeah. See, that's another issue because you don't have the bandwidth going to the card. The AGP yeah. allows you to pump, pump more uh, data into it. And that sounds to me now like it's an older machine. Another big warning is there's no point in getting a very fast card if your microprocessor, if the CPU, the Pentium in there, is slower. It's waiting for the Pentium anyway. Mm -hmm. So if, if you we have a two gig, no, it's two gigs pretty fast, and there's no. no AGP on that motherboard. No, none at all. That's a very I know I can't even think of what kind of motherboard that could be. Oh, maybe uh, it has built in. It probably has built in video. That's probably what it well, is. Well, yeah, that was uh, it had the uh, built in. Got it, got it, and, and we changed it for what we uh, was the biggest at the time. The best you could get at the time, and it may yeah. even still be because uh, the high end uh, video cards they don't they don't make them in PCI because that's right. Yeah. Well, you know, another thing you could do, Christmas is coming, yeah. <laughs> uh, is you, you could probably, and might be worthwhile, upgrade the motherboard oh, yeah? and get a new processor and a motherboard, and then you could get a much higher end video card, and then Battlefield 1942 would look great. I can imagine, yeah. 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 Well, PCI Express. Yeah, I mean, maybe even go PCI Express to get the really the latest thing. That's that's really kind of the way to go nowadays, is not even to go AGP, but get PCI Express. Yeah, yeah right. that's the new thing, eh? That's the new thing. Okay. It's so talk it's so nice to talk to you, Micheline. What's your boyfriend's name? Reja. Does he not speak English? Oh, yes, he does. Oh, he's just shy? But I take care of the computer part. Oh, you're the geek in the house. Yes. Do you have a sister? I love <laughs> <laughs> Annie. Annie's in love. <laughs> Micheline, it's great to talk to you. Well, thank you very take much. Take care. Thanks so much for calling Keep up the, the good work. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Bye. That's so sweet. Isn't, Isn't that, that nice? great? She's yeah. the geek in the family. Love it. She's taking care of the video cards. I tell you, more and more women are... are, are I, why not? They look after the finances. They look after the computers, Why too. Why not? Why not? Know? Right, Amber? <laughs> well, you yeah, know, in too. some African tribes, the guys just sit out front and chew betel nut all day. I, <laughs> I don't it sound like a bad life to me. <laughs> now it's time for one of my favorite segments, Dance Lessons. No, actually, it's time for our free file of the day with a lovely and talented Mr. Andy you Walker. Walk. You have to walk. Dance backwards. Moonwalk. Ah! Moonwalk. <laughs> Who put that there? <laughs> So what do we have today, Andrew? We have the fastest free file on the planet, because Ooh. this thing really only does one thing. Should be fast, sort of thing. <laughs> it's called... But it does that very well. It does very well. It's called Move On Boot. And I have to thank Andrew, from, I think it's from Leo, from Leoville. It was mm -hmm. a guy called Andrew who, who recommended it. I think okay. you forwarded a message from him. Move On Boot. So Move On Boot, what it does is, you know, sometimes you really want to get rid of a file, but Windows has got its tentacles on it. It's yeah. holding it real yeah. tight. Yeah, yeah. So what you can say is... Mark this file for deletion. And what all you do is when you install this program... So if, if you try to throw it out and it says, can't throw it out, it's busy, it's locked, I can't get rid of it, you just move on boot. You move on boot. And so it does actually, it's also a little confusing because when it installs, it doesn't show up anywhere. It's actually on a right-click menu. Okay. So I'm going to go... It's what, they, what we call a shell extension. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to right-click on this, and I'm going to say, see there, it says, delete file on the next boot. Oh, so when Windows is booting, it isn't it hasn't had time to make the file busy yet, so it can delete it as part of the startup process. Even though once it's started up, it can't delete it. That's right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it asks you if you want to delete oh, the file. Get this. And that happens all the time, yeah. doesn't it? The file's busy. You can't delete it. You can't empty the trash. It just drives you crazy. There you go. Move on boot. So very simple, useful, and free. And free. <laughs> all right. We've got more free files of the day, including Move on Boot, all at our website, callforhelptv.com. Check it out. Uh, up next. Some sweet tips from our Photoshop Pro. He's got some handy solutions 
for your resolution needs. Stay right here. Right. <laughs> Caramba. Welcome back to Call for Help. One of the most confusing areas uh, in Photoshop is the relationship between scanner, printer, and file resolutions. I, I get this question all the time. DPI, resol screen resolution, what, what, you know, 1800 by 12, what do these numbers mean? Well, fortunately, Greg Brand Dan Book is Dan Brook is here to uh, resolve our resolution issues. He is a Photoshop wizard and uh, works with a, a local photographer here in Toronto to do amazing uh, stuff. And uh, so... I hear I hear the phrase DPI. I hear the phrase screen resolution. I hear optical printer resolution, optical scanner LPI, resolution. LPI, you LPI. Name it, it's all out there. It's very confusing. So can you give us kind of a, the lowdown of what it all means? Absolutely. Um, there's two ways of defining resolution. You've got your file size. Like a lot of people talk about your digital cameras having like 5 megapixel resolution, right. 10 megapixel resolution. Right. Um, and then when you're sending things to printers, you've got your uh, printer resolution. Okay. Um, so and there's also your screen resolution. We won't even get into which that. Which is another thing altogether. <laughs> we, won't even, we won't go there. Yeah, and your print resolution has nothing to do with your uh, print file resolution. Okay. So one of the examples I brought in, uh, let's say we're going to scan a slide. All right. uh, actually, that's probably a bit too small to see. I've got a, a larger one here. We can, there we go. <laughs> Here's a slide, <laughs> a really big slide. So if you're trying to scan an image and you want to scan it, this, for this example, we'll do 1,000 DPI for your scanner. First so, of all, this is your niece. This she is my niece, so Morgan. Cute. Oh, hi, Morgan. All right, thanks at for the, letting us use you, At Morgan. the fair in London. Oh, how fun. Um, so say you scan this. The average slide is one inch by one and a half inches. They're, they're not very big. They're not. Okay. So you scan that at 1,000 DPI. You're going to get a file that's 1,000 pixels by 1,500 pixels, which defines the file size, but not really its resolution. So let me do that again. Because it's one inch by one and a half inches, 1,000 dots of resolution turns into... 1,000 1, by 1,500. Right. One inch by 1.5 okay, inches. Okay. So you scan it at 1,000 DPI. So if you print it at the resolution you scan it at, you're going to get... <laughs> well, it'll be the same size as the slide. As the slide, exactly. But it's 1,000 DPI, <laughs> but it's the same size as the slide. Exactly. Okay. That's well, obviously not what we're looking for to send grandma. No. You're going to want to okay. send her a 4 by 6, right. which is four times the size, yeah. which means your resolution to 1,000 DPI is going to drop by four to one quarter. Okay, you're blowing it up so the dots per inch is going down, not up. Right. Yeah, so that's confusing right there. You'd say, oh no, the number of dots per inch should go up, but well, no, because we're blowing it up. Yeah, right. so you've still got a four by six, 1,000 by 1,500 pixels at 250 DPI now. So the pixel, we didn't increase the number of pixels, we just increased the size. The file size right. is exactly the same. So the resolution in terms of file size is the same. The resolution has lowered in terms of dots per inch. But now in this case, uh, you know, that's a pretty good DPI. That's, a that's high pretty good. Resolution. 250 is fine for any yeah. printer. Yeah. Um, now here... Let's blow it up really big. We have a 10 by 15. Okay. So again, 1,000 pixels by 1,500 pixels, you've dropped to 100 DPI, which is a little low for a printer. That's a little too low. Huh? Okay. So you want to get around 200 to 300 DPI? Uh, 240, 240 to 360 okay. for the averaging jet printer. Okay. Um, now, just... For the blow same argument, I blew it up to 62 and a half feet wide. This is a this is a billboard. Yeah, and this is only a small part of it. Well, exactly. After I printed, I realized I'm not going to get that in the <laughs> we studio. Get that in here. So I just took a little segment of it. This That's is your here. eye. Now it looks fine if you squint, but if you if you zoom in, you can see. If I want you to, yeah, you it's just that? a bunch of little tiles. This is at yeah. two dots per inch. So it comes up to 62 and a half feet wide. File size resolution has stayed the same. Dots per inch resolution has dropped right down to 2 dpi. It's really just multiplication, but maybe that's why yeah. it confuses people, or division, maybe I should say. Yeah. So again, if, if you start off with 1 inch by 1 and a half inches, and it's 1,000 dots, you've got 1.5 megapixels. Oh. which is how it relates to digital cameras. Oh. This would be equivalent to an image taken on a 1.5 megapixel digital camera. Well, now we know we shouldn't blow up a 1.5 megapixel digital camera this big because no, it's going to be 100 DPI. I, I don't think they make 1.5 megapixels anymore. Oh, it's pretty hard. But if you had a 3 megapixel camera, then it gets you closer. Then you're That's getting closer, 200 yeah. 200 dots per inch. Uh, not quite because Almost. it goes it has stretched both directions. Right. That'd okay. be probably about like 180 or so. Okay. So really, 4 megapixels would be kind of the minimum then for uh, a big blow-up like this. 3 will get you about that size, yeah. 
but uh, any yeah, bigger? Four. Yeah, four or five is yeah. now. Eight's getting to be the standard. So now, if I get a, you know, my my Nikon's six and a lot of eight megapixels, is that big enough to blow up uh, a picture to billboard size? Or are we gonna... uh, well, the nice thing about billboards is you're looking at them from the street, right. so the resolution can be a lot lower. Right. This actually, as a billboard, as you drove okay. up on the 401, yeah. wouldn't look too bad. Fine. Yeah, you, you hold it in your hand. And you it's were just tricky. out in a helicopter this morning taking uh, pictures that are going to be used in advertising, might be blown up quite a bit. What was, was the resolution of those pictures? Uh, that was a 22 megapixel digital camera. Oh, man. We were shooting to a G4 laptop. Because it's a 50 megabyte file. It's uh, When you open it up, it's about 65 megs. It's huge. And sharp like you wouldn't believe. Well, of course it is. But yeah. that's not practical. So always you're making a compromise between how much in the file size, how much you know data I want to put in that file, how much do I need. Right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the more the better, but... Not always. Uh, to a point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, an example of that is when uh, people buy their printers, they get, uh, you know, 1440 resolution, right. 2880 resolution. Right. If right. you send a 2880 DPI file for an 8x10, that's going to be a 1.85 gigabyte file. You're you don't not need do that. It. No. You don't, you're not so a lot of people are confused by it, but my printer can do 2880. Why, you know. So am I buying too much resolution in the printer? You're not. The more the better. But um, the reason you have such high resolution on printers is because it's using four colors of ink, four or six colors, cyan, magenta, oh, yellow, so you and will black. Divide it by four and it's the... spraying a pattern of dots to right. make up um, oh, I see. a pixel. I An see. example I've shown on the on the laptop here, you can see. Um, That's kind of cool. So it looks like it looks like a pointillist painting. Yeah. So each pixel you can see is a spray pattern of different types of uh, of colors. So they need that kind of resolution in order even to get a reasonable pixel. pixel yeah. 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 So you can see here. You take these are the original pixels. Each pixel needs a lot of little dots to make up that the makes colors. Sense. So 2880 isn't you, too much. It's not too much. Right. So when you send a 240 DPI file to it, it sprays a bunch of pixels to make up right. a bunch of dots to make up each make pixel. A variety of colors. So are, is there a rule of thumb when you're buying a camera, a printer, a scanner of the dots per inch you should be looking for? The rule of thumb is buy the most you can afford. Because <laughs> you'll never, you'll never, you know, you always need it. Right? Yes. I mean, yeah. the, the camera we were shooting this morning was about $60,000. Okay. That's more than I can afford. <laughs> yeah. Six um, megapixels is fine for me. It's fine. Three is fine if you're doing a lot of travel stuff. Right. Three and megapixels. You put it on the screen where the resolution isn't very high. Exactly. Yeah. Or even four by sixes are fine. Out of, well, I hope that know. makes sense. It seems counterintuitive. When you blow it up, the dots per inch go down. But Just because they're it. getting larger. Take it's, graph paper, stretch it up. Makes sense. Yeah. Squares get bigger. Greg, thank you very much for explaining this in a way that anybody can understand. Greg spent his last 10 years figuring out how photos work and now uh, preaches and teaches the digital gospel at the Canadian Photographic Center. You can uh, visit his Canadian website at photographiccenter.com. And don't forget to check out our show notes at callforhelptv.com. We'll be back in just a few to answer more of your questions. Stay right here. They caught me. It's not magic. I told you I'd be right back for my next trick. I'll be solving yet another of your computer computer conundrums. Amber, dear, you got yep. a caller for me? Yeah, we have David from Ashford, Washington, on oh, the line. Oh, that's great. Hey, David, how are you? I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing great, Leo. Well, good. Welcome. Oh, there he is. Look, right behind me. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. What can we do for you today? Uh, I just bought a uh, a uh, a new monitor, and uh, the first instruction on the pamphlet is uh, to face my monitor east, and I'm not sure why that's <laughs> <over>. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Say, where did you get it? Who? What? It was uh, it was from uh, it was from Samsung. And Samsung. The first instruction on it is to face my monitor east, and I was like, why? This is isn't that a, so? this isn't a joke uh, no, instruction sheet that your friends put in the box or something like that. <laughs> So, Samsung. I mean, Samsung is a very reliable company. Face your monitor to the east. Yeah. Is it a very, very fancy, hyper-calibrated monitor of some kind? Something like that. Is it's it? A, uh, a, it's a SyncMaster 793MB. It's a digital uh, LCD. Uh, no? no, it's a. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a CRT. It's a standard CRT. Okay. Well, that might make sense on a CRT. And then how? How big is it? It's a 17-inch. Okay. I mean, that's a, it's a goofy thing. The only thing I can think of is the Earth does have magnetic fields, and a CRT monitor is affected by the magnetic fields because the electron, and the way that CRT monitor works, you have a phosphorus screen, 
and then you have an electron gun back here, and it's shooting electrons at the screen and making it glow, right? Yes. Well, the Earth has a magnetic field which could deflect ever so slightly, if you ask me, but could deflect the path of those electrons. So ideally, you'd like the electrons to be, uh, the, the gun to be firing, uh, I would think, uh, along the axis of the field, but if they say face the monitor east, yeah. yes, that's, that's, I guess that's going perpendicular. That's very strange, so that the electron gun would be actually going across or through the magnetic field of the Earth, unless I'm wrong. Maybe the Earth's magnetic field goes, goes around the equator instead of from north to south. I found, yeah. I found this great article. Actually. Andy says he's found an article that's talking about this. Uh, this yeah. seems to me to be a little bit of voodoo. I can't imagine that that very, very weak magnetic field. Uh, I mean, this guy seems to uh, know what he's talking about. What and does he say? He says... The horizontal component of the monitor deflects the field up or down. If you face oh. the monitor so the screen looks east, the image will be raised slightly. Face it west and the image will drop. Oh. <laughs> but it'll be fixed just by adjusting the monitor, <laughs> and really, it's incremental. Well, that's why I was asking maybe if this was like some super-duper fancy Dan monitor that is just super hyper-accurate for, you know, late, but it doesn't sound like a 17-inch CRT no. monitor. That doesn't sound right. I think that some engineer in, in Korea was having some, some fun at, when he wrote that <laughs> manual. In theory, yeah, you're, you know, uh, that's interesting. So, because I'm, I'm thinking the Earth's magnetic field, let me just think this out. We, you know, uh, if you have a, a, a magnet, I mean a, a compass, the, the, uh, the magnetized tip of the compass gets pulled north. So the magnetic field is going north-south, right? So you're turning, you're orienting this for the electron gun to fire through per, the, the field instead of going along the axis of it, which would seem to be more accurate. So it's like shifts right. I can't figure it out. Well, it doesn't make it. What happens if you turn it on its side? Well, no, what it says, it says if you're at the poles, if you're like on an Arctic expedition. Yeah. Then it would then make a difference. We said you should orient the screen to look north or south. That's what I would think. Yeah. You would want to orient it along the lines of the, ma uh, the magnetic, magnetic field of yeah. force. Yeah. But it's not going to change anything. Really, you know what, David? Ultimately. Yeah. That's just a funny, funny manual. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think you have to... I, I'm glad you asked. I mean, that's just a fascinating thing. And I guess there is, in theory, that would make some sense. But I, don't, I think that the force is so minor. I mean, yeah. you have magnetic fields coming off your refrigerator. I mean, you have magnetic... Any electric motor in your house, any metal in your house has probably a stronger magnetic field. I mean, try to use a compass in your car. Yeah. It's very difficult because yeah. the metal in the car is affecting it. So I can't imagine that the, ma that the Earth's magnetic field is significant enough to m deflect your monitor <laughs> sufficiently <laughs> to notice. So I'd say put it any darn place you want. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what a great question. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to call Samsung and see, ask them. What, so let's get this 17-inch CRT. Is it brand new? Uh, yes, I bought it about one, one month ago. Okay, we're going to call Samsung and we're going we're gonna, to, if we can get through the giggles from the PR representative... <laughs> <laughs> we will see if we can figure out why they said this. I think it's just silly. But anyway, thank you, David. What a great question. Thank you very much. Hey, I appreciate the call. Okay. Don't worry about your... <laughs> I'm never worried about it, how my monitor is... You know, just don't wear it on your head because people think you're a goonie bird. Don't go anywhere, folks. We just got to one more chance to take our tech quiz. Our question of the day is what kind of port did those original 68K Max... The ones based on the 68,000 processor feature. Was it an RS-232, SCSI, USB, or dessert wine? Get to the website and give us the answer. We'll talk about it. When call for help, continue! Welcome back to Call for Help, taking you back on a trip through time to 1984. And the first Macintosh computer based on the 68,000 chip, they had SCSI. In fact, Apple really was the first to put SCSI connectors on all its computers and really kind of uh, introduced SCSI to the world. SCSI kind of gone now, but for a while it was it was the high-end choice for connecting computers. Apple, to their credit, moved on to something called FireWire, which has now become kind of yep. the top of the line way to connect things. So, uh, and, and I think they were one of the first companies to put USB on their computers, too. So they've always been advanced. They never wanted to use the same old boring connectors as everybody else. They always, <laughs> they always to do want their to be different. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So don't let Google or other search engines lead you astray. There are easy ways to take control of your time online. 
and do better internet searches. Who better to tell us about it than Amber? She's got some searching tips some for Some searching Google. tips, yeah. Actually, the purpose of this segment is to help people so they don't spend so much time searching. You know, you get right. caught up and you spend, you know, hours online trying to find what you're looking for. So hopefully this will help a little bit. And we're going to start with Google, obviously, which everybody knows and everybody loves. That's the first uh, tip of all. That's just, the first just use tip. Google. Use Google. And <laughs> yeah. then another segment, we're going to talk about the new search engine, A9, but not right now. A9 is based on Google, so it's, it's based just Google+. On Google. Plus. It's Google+, yeah. Plus, but it has yeah. books from Amazon and those right. types of things. Right. So that's pretty neat as well. But we're going to start with Google. So I think everybody knows um, most people will search with the web function on Google. Um, so that's to search all the that's different web pages. That's the there. default. When that's you just, the default. Yeah, you're, you're, when you go to Google, that's what you're exactly. going to get. Exactly. Yeah. But um, I'm going to show just one little quick tip that is good for people who are in the IT business. If you want to search um, to see how many people link to you, you can do that on Google with this easy link colon. Can see how many people, let's see, link to Leoville. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Google knows because that's one of the things Google pays attention to. Yeah. Is so this this is kind of neat. These if, are all people who link to me. Yeah, so this is good if you're starting a small business and right. you want to know who else is linking to your site and maybe you can contact them and ask them to you know, update their links or things like that. So that's How many a, is there? There are 100. <laughs> 100 to Google. Yeah, links. I think there's, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to right. Leoville. So that's kind of a neat function within the web um, search area of Google that people might not know about. Um, another thing is the images link, which I think a lot of people know, but not everyone. So if you're searching for images and you want to find pretty much an image of anything, um, just because Thanksgiving is coming up, I'm going to say Thanksgiving turkey. See what we come up with. You know what's nice? I, if you did the web search for Thanksgiving turkey and then you want to yeah. see the images, just click the image tab and it'll continue and, that yeah, search. Yeah, you can do that as well. You can yeah. do it that way. But some people, Lots they're just looking for any types of, type of images. This the is images. where I steal all, I mean, uh, borrow all my images. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really kind of this great clip art directory. It is great. It's just neat if you're looking for pictures quickly and you want to throw them in an email or but, anything like that. Do so. ask before you put yeah, them Yeah, you should ask before you, you, yeah. you upload them to your site. <laughs> um, and then we have groups, which is just search any Usenet groups that have been online. There, I use this for troubleshooting. If you have a problem and mm -hmm. you can't figure it out, do a search on the groups because this is where people go. It's like the world's largest yeah. message board. Yeah, that's really cool as well. And then we have the news function. So I you use can, that too. You can day. search any of the news headlines that go out. And then I'm trying to rush through this so we can get to my favorite. What's that? Frugal. Frugal? What is Frugal? Frugal is the shopping search engine. Oh. So this is really, really neat if you want to do shopping and find the best prices out there. Now, it's not geek shopping necessarily. I mean, it's any kind of stuff. No, just shopping shopping. You what know? kind of stuff would you be shopping okay, for? Okay, let's say lady? we're looking for a pair of seven jeans. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this your brand? Well, I don't have seven jeans, but I'd like to have them. But they're pretty expensive. Um, so we can go onto Frugal and we can do a search and it will come up with all the places, all the deals. Um, that can you order it that's the cheapest on top? Yeah, well you can do best match. You can go low to high or high to low. So obviously, I don't know anyone who would want to go high to low. Right. <laughs> um, Look, you can get it for a dollar. Yeah. Oh, no, that's something no, no. Else. <laughs> you, have to, you have to kind of uh, scroll through some of these to check out the best. Uh, right. Seven Chinese brothers, only yeah. $2.50. Yeah, see, a that's the thing. A palace in Baghdad, $3. They're going cheap these days. Yeah, you know? they're going yeah. cheap. So yeah. this is a really neat thing. There we go. If we put it in quotes, it will search oh, okay. uh, more accurately. So you can go through and find it. They're expensive. Know, yeah, they're really expensive. Who spends that much for jeans? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody I know. She's hiding I know, head. I know. Yeah, so wow. for... Frugal is actually really, really cool for people who like to shop online and they don't want to use just the general web search on uh, Google. Are, are they uh, searching through online shopping sites? or Yes, uh, yeah, okay. but they don't get paid. The only thing that um, they get paid for is the sponsored links on the right-hand side. So, so no one's paying them. It's a little different than some of these other search engines where it's, you get a paid for mentions. Exactly. It's a little bit different. So, you know, you come, it comes up and it comes up with all the places that have this product on sale. So that's how Frugal works. And it's in the beta version, so they haven't worked out some of the kinks. So. Eventually, hopefully, they'll refine it a little bit for those uh, avid shoppers. Well, you could always do more on Google. There's so much to it. Oh, there's so much to it. And then, you know, basically, as far as uh, advice for searching online, you should try to be as specific as possible. Mm -hmm. And I also think you should try to limit your time because you can waste so much time searching around. So, you know, <laughs> pick up the phone and call someone if you're after really looking while, for something. Yeah, after a while, give up. But you did an interesting thing by putting it in quotes, uh, the seven jeans. That yeah. narrowed it down to not pages that had the word seven and jeans, but the phrase, the phrase seven, seven jeans. jeans. And that will help you a lot. That will save you some time. Yeah. So that will include only pages that have that together. That's That's yeah, great. so it's really cool. So hopefully this can help people out a little bit when they're going online. To do What's your things. favorite Google search tip? Email Amber at callforhelptv.com yep. and check out our website for more Google search yep. tips. We've got a lot more. Oh, definitely. We'll do A9 pretty soon as well. That's fun. Yeah, yeah it's really fun. Let's get another caller on the air here. All right. We'll get another caller. We have Jesse from Burlington, Ontario on All the line. All right. Hello, Jesse. How are you? Good. How are you, Liam? I'm great. Welcome to the show. Thank you. What can I do for you today? Uh, well, I'm building a computer. Yeah. And I wanted to know if there was a website I could go to 
and and type in what I wanted to do and and have it tell me exactly which motherboard and processor and a list of everything that I'm going to need. Oh, that would be nice. Maybe Andy, you could design that site like a decision tree. Say, you know, this, 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 and it. And it I don't know of anything like that. I'll have to look for something. Most of the sites I know about will give you information, but you're going to have to do the, the hard work of figuring out what to choose. I can give you a very simple decision tree, though. The first thing you should think about, and you may not have a, a clear choice, and it doesn't matter, is whether you want an AMD or an Intel processor. Because once you choose one of those, your, all your choices then go off in different directions. AMD, I think, gives you more bang for your buck. At any given price point, you'll get more power on an AMD processor than you will on the same priced Intel Pentium processor. I like AMD chips. Uh, so that's what I would suggest. Now, once you choose AMD or Intel, you're going to have to choose then motherboards that are compatible using compatible chipsets. I like the Enforce 3 chipset or the Enforce 2 chipset if you're a budget user. And then once you have the motherboard, then you know what kind of memory you're going to have to put in it. And the next step is then to decide what video and audio cards to put in. And that's a pretty simple one. You say, am I a gamer? I need a higher end card. If I don't play games, an inexpensive $50 or $60 card will be just fine. Almost any card out there. If you want to capture video, you might want to look at one that has video capture. If you want to display it on TV, some people want to do that for their gaming. You might want to look for one with TV out, those kinds of things. You have to kind of think about how you're going to use it. Sound card, I wouldn't even worry about nowadays. Motherboard sound is more than adequate for almost all gaming. Hard drives, I'd say get two, not one. If you're thinking of looking at a 160 gig drive, get two 80s. It makes it easier to back up. If one drive fails, you have a duplicate of uh, the contents on the second drive. I don't recommend RAID for most users unless you have a really specialized need. Uh, I get a DVD burner these days. They're so cheap. Lots of backup capacity. Uh, you can also burn CDs with those. And then the next choice is LCD or CRT monitor, and that's really de determined by your amount of money you have to spend. If you have enough money and desk space is a big issue, I'd get an LCD. Otherwise, you can get a very good big CRT display as long as you've got the desk space for it for a lot less money. I'll tell you what, we'll put some recommendations on the uh, website and also some sites like Anon Tech, Tom's Hardware, PC Mechanic here, which is a great build-your-own PC article to help you get started. And I'll have to look and see if there's one that gives you a decision tree. That would be a neat that idea. That would be neat. Maybe we should do that. Yeah, we should. It's not over yet. Some final words. Sit tight. We'll be back right after this. Back to the absolute peak of human perfection. Human perfection. Prizes continue online at our website. Don't forget our uh, contest at callforhelptv.com. We all love cool prizes. Get to the website to win some great stuff. Yeah. We've been working on John's question, the very first question on the show, and Andy and I and uh, Mikey have come up with some good answers for him. Uh, first of all, Andy found a good one. Boot into safe mode. If, you're not law, if you didn't do it as administrator, you'll be able to get into an administrator account, which will then allow you to copy those files. Uh, over. Uh, also, I found a really wacky kind of uh, way to do it. If you can get a Windows 2000 boot disk, and you can down these on, download these online. If you log into Windows to boot up from the Windows 2000 boot disk and then use the recovery console, you can then, there, no password required, copy files off on a floppy or another device. And then Mikey has found a, a good Linux rescue disk that allow you boot into that and allow you to copy your files. So there's three ways, John, you can get your files. If you want to be on the show, you got a question for us, go to our website. Press that button, callforhelptv.com. Remember, if you've got a problem with your personal, personal computer, no wine, no moan, no yell. Say it with me. Call, Call for help. help. See you later.